Hey community, we're back and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And together we are b, &B, b the, the community, community MP. So our topic for today is kind of in a continuation of yes. what we've talked about for the last couple weeks. So we talked about uh, strokes. Yeah. We talked about um, DVTs, DVTs. Blood clots. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about pulmonary embolism. Yes. So that's kind of when the clot travels to the lungs. You're so, giving them a definition, Brandy. Okay, well that's what they want to know, <laughs> right? Right, right? So, but the actual definition is um, PE refers to the obstruction of the pulmonary artery mm -hmm. or one of the branches. Um, and it's usually obstructed by like a thrombus, tumor, air, or fat that mm -hmm. usually originates somewhere else in the body. And most people know it as a blood clot. So mm -hmm. usually a blood clot may originate in the leg and travel to the um lung one of the arteries of the lung yes and obstructed mm -hmm. and the, the, the most the serious thing about this topic is that a lot of people don't make it out to tell you about it that's true that's true usually some if it suddenly occurs the result is sometimes death yeah so that's the important so that the, the, the main thing is we want to prevent pe's from occurring mm -hmm. so that you can prevent death from occurring right yes okay so there's different types of PEs. Um, you have acute, subacute, and chronic. And of course, acute means it happens rapidly. Mm -hmm. Like the patient um, typically have signs and symptoms and immediately after that clot travels. So with acute, that's usually when that can occur. So then you also have subacute. So some of um, some people with subacute, it usually you may have a PE, but you may have um you you may have symptoms that occur like days and weeks after. Mm -hmm. And then you have chronic, that's people who continue to get PEs or they may have symptoms that occur for a longer period of time, um, for like many years. But the acutest what we want to focus on today is when it, it occurs and you need it's an emergency. It's right. truly a medical emergency when it occurs. So yeah. Straight to the emergency. Room. Yes, when it occurs. It, it, the, the, like you said before, though, the crazy thing is yeah. sometimes it happens so fast that people don't yeah. make it to the emergency room. So that's why when some of those signs and symptoms occur, it's very important to take heed. Like, uh, you get short of breath, it's out of the whim. Mm -hmm. I was doing fine, all of a sudden I'm short of breath. Know what? 911. 911. Yep. So let's talk about some of the facts. Okay, so approximately 900,000 people are affected by a DVT or PE each year. Yes. More than 50% of all PEs occur with people like in nursing homes or hospitals. That's because they're usually laying down yes. for a long time, not getting up, moving around. Um, in the US, DVTs and PEs are responsible for 100,000 deaths a year. Okay. I, I was listening to this thing earlier today and it said that it's the third leading cause of death in the US. Hmm, okay. Which, I don't know, but I mean, they occur pretty frequently. I know, I know. And a lot of times, I know if I've seen um, DVTs and PEs occur like after surgery, mm -hmm. after people have surgery. Also, like if they um, injure themselves. Yeah. Like say for instance, you fall and you hurt your arm or your leg. And I done seen like a couple of patients who had um, a PE to occur. One of, my, he, one of my patients, he hurt his arm. He fell out of a truck and he hurt his arm. Mm -hmm. And he's a truck driver, so he said he went back to work, and next thing you know, he in an ER, cardiac arrest. Oh, my God. Yeah, so evidently he said something was broken, and he didn't know. Yeah. So a blood clot must have formed. Yeah. And yeah. I, I remember having a patient uh, when I was doing home health. She was, I wouldn't say she was, like, really healthy, but I wasn't expecting her to die anytime mm. soon. She was, I think she was probably in, like, her 50s. But I had gone and seen her on Friday. She fell on, I think it was Saturday. I called on Monday and the husband was like, oh, she fell over the weekend and mm -hmm. um, she died. They found oh. out that she threw a clot. Oh my God. It was God. A, um, from the fracture, so. Yeah, so yeah, so usually with injuries. So whenever, like I tell people, even though you may have an injury, and you may feel fine, mm -hmm. it's always good to go and get it checked yeah. out. Go and get that x-ray, CT scans, go and get it checked out. Just to be on the safe side, yeah. Okay. So PE is a leading cause of death in pregnant women or after you give give, give birth, yeah. postpartum. So um, we're going to do a, 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 a presentation on that also. Because okay. I think it's very yeah. important, especially African-American women. Yes, for sure. 
Um, the, the majority of um, pulmonary embolisms, people who die from um, pulmonary embolisms die within the first 30 to 60 minutes. So that's how suddenly and rapid mm -hmm. it occurs. And that's how you deteriorate that fast within 30 to 60 minutes. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's scary. Mm -hmm. That's scary. And then one fourth of people die instantly from a VE. One in four people die instantly. Yeah. That's scary. That's scary. So it's a serious topic. Um, so what are some of the risk factors? Like brain disease, not being mobile, yeah. people in nursing homes, hospitals. So that's why it's important. I used to wonder when I was like in nursing school, mm -hmm. it was important for you to get your patient out the bed. And walk. And walk your patient, even though they may not want to, but yeah. it was very important to get them moving, moving around. Yeah, because the patients are usually, I'm tired, I just had surgery, I don't want to yes. walk. And which is understandable, but... That's the possibility good. of having mm -hmm. a blood clot or a yes. pulmonary embolism is serious. So that's why they tell you to do it. So if you have surgery mm -hmm. or you're in the hospital for a long time, just get up and walk when they ask you to get up and walk. Even if you have medical problems and you're on a flight for a long period of time, mm -hmm. it's okay to get up and stand up and move around. Like you said last um when we were talking about deep vein thrombosis, uh -huh. truck drivers. Right. Yeah. Like it's important for them to stop, get up and move around. Mm -hmm. So Yep. It is, even though, and, and I get that they want to get from one destination to the next, Yes. and I'm sure they're tired, but it is important to yes, stop and get is. up and move. It is. So a recent surgery or trauma mm -hmm. is a risk factor. Being obese, being mm -hmm. overweight, um, and also, it's also a risk, risk, risk factor. Um, different hormone therapy. So mm -hmm. a lot of, so most people who take, um, not most people, but some, some people who take um, estrogen, mm -hmm. they're at higher risk for um, getting a blood clot. Or Especially a, if they take estrogen and they smoke. Yeah. Oh, yes. So that's another one. Yeah. Heavy smoking yeah. is a risk factor. Um, cancer mm -hmm. can be a risk factor also. So some of the symptoms. So you mm -hmm. may feel shortness of breath just sitting there. All of a sudden, you're watching TV, then bam, you're short of breath. That is the number one. Number one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not one, mm -hmm. but that's seventy three percent of people have that as their um, primary symptom, and then you can also feel short of breath with exertion. So if you usually don't get short of breath when you're walking and stuff, and you suddenly start to get short of breath, then that's a problem. And then I think what we gave the example one time, like if you usually can walk to the mailbox without a problem, yeah, and yeah. suddenly you can't, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, fluoritic pain cough, orthopnea, calf or thigh pain, and or uh, swelling. So yeah. you may see, like, you may have pain in your calf or you may notice that it's bigger than yes. the other one. So, and then wheezing, hemoptysis, which is coughing up blood mm -hmm. and then having low blood pressure. Okay. And with the pleuritic pain, like when you're taking a deep breath and mm -hmm. it hurts, mm -hmm. like when you take a deep breath, you shouldn't have no pain. pain. No. And with the orthopnea, if you gotta lay, sit up, like, if you can't lay flat to sleep, yeah, like that's that's an issue that you mm -hmm. should be discussing with your primary care provider anyway. But if you gotta sleep on several pillows and sleep up in a chair because you can't lay down flat, that's you need to be evaluated yes. also. All right, so how do we prevent um, pulmonary embolisms from occurring? So we avoid smoking. Okay. Maintain a healthy weight. So we talk about diet and exercise with All everything. It is yes. so important to, it's like the key to having a healthy life. Yes, it is. Uh, and I know it, it, it sounds cliche because everybody says it. Oh, you gotta exercise. Oh, yes. you gotta eat healthy. We're saying it because it's true. Yes. It is very true. So just do it. And then drink, <laughs> <laughs> drink a lot of water. Make sure you're moving around. Like we said, don't sit yes. for a long period of time. Don't lay in the hospital bed. Or if you're in a nursing home or mom's in a nursing home, yes. go see no. mom, help mom get up and walk around. Um, and then take your medications. Oh my God, today I had a patient that was like, um, oh, I went to see the vascular doctor mm -hmm. last year around this time. I was on a blood thinner. I took it for about six days and then I lost it. And I was like, oh, then what? He lost it? He lost did it. Tell me he went and got another he prescription. He did not. He was just like, well, I've been doing okay, but guess what his symptom was? What was it? Leg pain. Mm -hmm. So take, if you get prescribed blood thinners, do not stop taking them unless somebody told you to. And yeah. somebody as in like a, a <laughs> provider, not your friend. 
Um, but yeah, so yes. take your medicine. Wow, that's scary. It is. That's scary. That's scary. Yeah. Okay. So how do we treat it? Like we say, it's a medical emergency, you guys. So if you have any of those symptoms, call nine one one. Usually, um, the, that person who presents to the ER for a PE has to be resuscitated. Yes. Usually, yeah, it's that yeah. it's, it's deadly. Like she said, take your blood thinners, take mm -hmm. anticoagulation. That's medicine to help thin your blood. Yes. So the blood can keep flowing and blood clots won't form. Correct. Take your medication. Sometimes you have to have surgery. They may mm -hmm. have to put a filter or do a clot removal mm -hmm. so, so the blood can flow normally. So it's not a lot of treatment because a lot of people don't, don't make, make it. it. Nope. So that's why it's very important. So like we said, if you hurt yourself, injure yourself, I don't care if you say, oh, I... I I fell and I hurt myself, but I I, I was okay. Yeah. Go get evaluated. Just to be on just the a, safe just side. Just to be on the safe side. Just yeah. go get evaluated so they can do a couple of x-rays and they'll see if you um maybe you have a blood clot or mm -hmm. something. So okay. yeah. Anything else you want to add with peas? I think I think that's it. But I, I am happy that we're doing, you know, a series of how, you know, the different types of yes. blood clots. Yes. So I'm excited to discuss blood clots in women, especially black women. women. Yeah. And, it, no, and the reason why I thought it was a pregnant good topic, women. pregnant women, I can remember being in nursing school. Um, my, um, it was undergrad and it was my OBGYN rotation. It was a young lady laying in a bed on a unit with, um, I th maybe it wasn't OB, but I know it was one of my rotations. A young lady, she was like 20 years old. Mm -hmm. She was hospitalized. She had a tube, uh, um, uh, um, endotracheal tube. Mm -hmm. She was on a breathing machine, basically. And I asked, like, what happened to this? Like, oh, she just gave birth. I'm like, she just gave birth? It was like, she just gave birth. Her baby is in a NICU. It's like she threw a blood clot. Oh, my God. And I promise you, I can still see this young lady. Mm -hmm. I never got that out of my head. That's so scary. I, and I don't know what happened to her, but I never got that scene out of my head of her laying in that bed because I, yeah. I knew she was young. But yeah, and she had just given birth. I think with my second kid, because I knew like all the things that could go wrong during labor, I was like in a full panic. I'm like, mm -hmm. what if I throw a clock? What if I hold this? What if, what if they mess? What if I can't have any more kids? Not that I even wanted any more yes. kids, but... You just, when you know a little know. bit too much. I know, I know. So, yeah, so I think that's why I'm like, okay, this is a serious topic. Then I, I had an uncle. I had two uncles. I'm like, three uncles mm -hmm. who died from throwing peas, died suddenly. That's crazy. So, yeah, so. I had a brother-in-law that had a, a DVT. Mm -hmm. but And so young, because, you yeah. know, I'm young, so my brother-in-law has yeah. to be. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But yeah, it's scary. Yes. Yeah, so, but it's very common. So yeah, it is. So yeah. that's what we want you guys to know. And what's our disclosure? So our disclosure is that remember, this information is shared with you guys just to spark a conversation between family and friends. It does not take the place of your primary care provider. So we still want you to go see your primary care provider. Come see us. Yes, please come and see us. Yes. Or see your primary care, yeah. whoever's your primary <laughs> care provider. Um and what else be? Um, follow us yep like share subscribe to us on all platforms bnb yeah the community mps, MPs. facebook instagram and definitely subscribe to our youtube yes. channel we have a lot of good information on there for patients and just the general population so the information is for the community it's we talk about it in terms that you can understand yes. and it's apply. free. <laughs> it is free. <laughs> it is free. It is free. <laughs> if it's free, it's me. <laughs> but yeah, so. Okay. And so why do we do this? Because community, community is, is our, our beauty. beauty. Have a great day.